stand and deliver your money or your... Said a highwayman, pulling over a rich-looking man who looked impatient. I know that, said the mark impatiently. He hadn't the time to be robbed by an amateur. He was late for a visit with the king. I have a gun, said the highwayman. I can see that I'm not blind, said the fat pigeon. Give me your bag, my fat pigeon, said the bandit. Not that. Go hijack a real pigeon. I'm late for an appointment, shouted the rich man, who tried to disarm the highwayman, but he was knocked out and robbed. Uh, this is what the bandit had on him when we caught him, sir, said a soldier to the king's thief-taker, Sir Thomas Gregory. Sir Thomas took the bag and looked at the contents. He found an item which took his attention. It was a music manuscript. He walked over to a piano and started to perform the song. Darkness conceals its beauty within an aura of fear. Night to me is something dear. In the coolness of the night I ride, the wary do cautiously hide, in fear of me and my cast. I alone see the night's beauty to its hour's last, like a thief in the night. When I'm seen, I disappear like a ghost out of sight, he sang, then stopped singing. What do you think about it? asked the thief-taker. It was good, said the soldier. Anything else? asked Sir Thomas. What else is there? asked the soldier. It was sung by the highwayman, the ghost, last week when he pulled over Lord Harry Scott, said Sir Thomas. So, said the soldier, not sure where the thief-taker was going. This looks to be the original manuscript of the song, said Sir Thomas. All right, said the soldier. I think they held up the ghost and stole his sheet music, said Sir Thomas. Why would he do that, asked the soldier. I think it was an accident. It must have been in the bag, said Sir Thomas. You think the bag belonged to the ghost? said the soldier. Yes, said Sir Thomas. I, I don't see anything that identifies him, said the soldier. The manuscript has his name on it, said Sir Thomas. The soldier looked at it and looked puzzled. Where? asked the soldier. It is in his hand, said Sir Thomas. What's the chance of us identifying the owner? asked the soldier. In the room walked a man. Hello, my lord, said Sir Thomas. Have you seen Sir Justin? asked the man. He's late, said the thief-taker. Who is his lordship? asked the soldier, curiously. The Earl of Essex, said Sir Thomas. The Earl spied the music. You got some new music? Oh, nice mind if I try it while I wait for him, the Earl said with his French accent. All right, my lord, said Sir Thomas. He sat and sang the song as he played the music. Nice music, mind if I borrow it? the Earl asked offhandedly. No, we are trying to study it, said the thief-taker. Oh, really? Who wrote it? I want a copy asked the Earl. We think it was the highwayman, the ghost, said Sir Thomas. He's good, said the Earl. The soldier wasn't enjoying hearing the song sung by the Earl, who had a strong French accent. Shut up, my lord, you are killing my ears, said Sir Justin, walking in the room. Philistine, hissed the Earl, standing up to greet his friend. Phyllis, don't call me a lady, joked Sir Justin. He's a fool, said a lady who entered the room with Sir Justin. Sir Justin glared at the lady. Hello, Mary, said Sir Thomas to his sister. The Earl felt sorry for his friend. The lady was his friend's fiancé, and they hated each other. The Earl picked up the music and looked at it distracted. He fell over, dropping it into the blazing fire in the chimney. No, screamed Sir Thomas, running to the fire, trying to salvage the destroyed sheet music. You fool, you destroyed the evidence that would have given us the ghost on a platter, shouted the angry thief-taker. I'm sorry, Sir Thomas said the Earl contritely as he stood up. Sir Justin shot the Earl an amused look. He knew something Sir Thomas didn't. The Earl was the ghost, and he had obviously planned to burn the evidence. Sir Thomas was so mad with the Earl, he didn't speak to him for a week.